We're here in the vertebrate preparation lab, the uh, place where all the good stuff comes when it arrives at the Museum of Paleontology. And we have the skull of our recent mammoth discovery. It's been under plastic so that we can control the rate at which it loses moisture. We don't want that to happen too fast because it causes the bone to crack more than we want it to. This is what most of a mammoth skull looks like. The animal is, in this case, done kind of a face plant on the padding. That is, it's the face, the part of its head that would ordinarily be facing on an angle like this, is down on this surface. These openings are the tusk sockets. This is where the tusks live during life, where they live and grow. I might be able to reach an arm through and get it to come out at this end, and you can see what's the back of the tusk socket. Ordinarily, that would be covered with bone, but you'll notice that this bone is broken away. And if we look at the rest of the skull, we see that there's another big part of it missing right here. It should come up this way, maybe yay high. There should be some strong bulbs of bone here that are the places where the, the neck vertebrae attach to the skull. But that's all been broken away and it reveals the brain cavity right here. What does that look like? Well, have you ever taken a poached egg and knocked the top of it off, scooped out that part of the, of the white, and then scooped out the rest? Well, I think this fracture plane along there has done the same thing for the brain cavity of this animal. And the brain has been removed, both from this side, we presume, but also right here. This is the brain cavity itself. In other words, this skull has been modified in order to harvest three areas of nutritious soft tissue from it, the brain and both tusk pulp cavities.